What the is up, Taboo listeners? This is Ashley Rodriguez. I'm your host of Taboo Talks. And you're listening to episode four on profanity. Before we dive headfirst into this episode, I'm going to reference a few articles and a video that I have the pleasure of listening to by John McCorder. He's a linguist and an academic on language. So it's not going to be the typical, oh, you know, it's this time of the century, we should be able to say whatever we want. It's not about that at all, but understanding where a lot of these words come from and that sometimes intent can really ruin verbiage and where words come from and what they actually mean. So we're going to dive into that real quick. This will probably be one of our shorter episodes on the podcast just because there's only so much that you can say about Take a quick listen to this video that I'm going to play for you. Words that often have four letters like damn, hell, fucking shit. That's profanity. But really, it's absurd at this point in 2018 to think of those words as profanity because most of us of all levels of education, of any social class, use those words all the time. There are some people who don't, they're now in the minority. I would say that I probably say fuck four or five times a day, often around my children and they're small and I don't consider that unusual. Shit to me is not profane, it's salty. So it comes down to the history of profanity, which goes in two main stages. At first, profanity was about gods and religion. And so if you took God's name in vain, you were swearing, so to speak. You, you're not supposed to swear to God. That's where that swear idea comes from. And so that's where you get things like Egad and by George, which were euphemisms for by God. It used to be that swearing or oaths, as they were called, that's why it's called that, those were profanity because this was a society where there was basically no such thing as an atheist and those concerns were very real. Then, especially starting in the 18th century, and this happened on both sides of the pond, there arose a certain oversensitivity from our current perspective to matters sexual and excretory. And so, you're not supposed to refer to sex, you're not supposed to refer to what happens in the bathroom, hence you get something like restroom, whereas you, know, you don't rest in it. So that takes us up to profanity circa 1965. Today, the words that we're taught are profanity are ones that we carefully shield children from until they're about 12 or 13 without exactly knowing why. And we assume that after that they're going to be using the words among each other and pretty soon around when they go to college they can start using them around us. That's gotten a little silly because those words aren't profane. We do have profanity though. An anthropologist looking at any Anglophone society would recognize different words as ones that we consider profane in the same way as ancient people thought of oaths as profane, and in the same way as Disraeli or Gladstone would have thought of shit and fuck as profane. And the profane words are, and notice how you're going to feel when I say them straight out without hesitating, nigger, faggot, cunt. That's profane. Those are words that we shudder to utter, that we shudder to hear, these are the words that people lose their jobs for uttering, that people avoid using on TV. Those are our profanity. Those words are taboo to us in the way that various things are taboo in ways that look quaint to us in many societies. I think that to have a taboo against abusing groups is something which might look quaint in two or five hundred years, but for now I think that it's a task that our society could benefit from working on. It's a taboo that makes sense. So it means that we moderns with our skyscrapers and psychoanalysis and you know, marijuana, etc., etc., are still human beings with taboos. We have taboos just like somebody on a tiny island in Polynesia. Our taboo is slurs against groups. So if I had it my way, we would start applying the word profanity to our actual profanity and start classifying the other words as salty, which is something quite different. 
There's a very specific article written by John Spur, and he's a professor at a university, and he published an article examining profanities from the 15th and 18th centuries and what it says about those societies at the time. So this article is pretty interesting because he kind of separates profanity and cursing or swears and cursing into two different categories. And what he's referencing is uh, swearing or oaths by God, which is referencing God's name in vain. Uh, if you reference the Bible, it says that if you take the Lord's name in vain, that, you know, that is uh, unacceptable. It's profane. It's something that you can um, face punishment for. And then he goes on to say that cursing something as simple as damn your blood back in the day or, you know, screw you, F you, any of those things, um, that would be considered a curse. And they actually had penalties that would have to be paid, you know, for, and I guess an example, a fine would be a pound and four shillings. And it says that that was for six souls by God and six curses, which was the damn your blood. So again, we go back to... In this article here, referencing that swearing first originated in the church. And then he also goes to reference that cursing back in the day was different from swearing. And cursing literally meant if someone today were to say fuck you or screw you or go to hell, that was a form of cursing. And you got to understand that back in the day, you know, if you go back to like the witch trials and things like that, it's all over in our history. But that was a concern that people would go around cursing people. So then you had fines for that and, and you were punished for cursing people. So that's where the difference in swearing by God's name and our curse words actually came to be. And so I want to go ahead and jump into this next article by a woman named Kate Wiles. And she actually goes over the history of these words. Specifically, if we start with the first word that she talks about is the word fuck. And that it didn't even exist in our language before the 15th century and has German or Dutch originations. But the word back then was literally referenced in hitting. So if you were to fuck something, it literally meant that you were to hit it or to strike it down. It had nothing to do with sex back then. And she even goes into the word sex that back in that time when fuck was used to mean hitting, the word for sex or the dirty word for sex was swive. And that's S-W-I-V-E. So fuck and sex had nothing to do with each other. And I just think that's really interesting. Then she goes into the history of our famous word shit that also has a long history. It's one of our oldest words. And again, from uh, it's a Ger Germanic or a Scandinavian language, but it literally was referencing when cattle would have diarrhea, it would leave a stream of diarrhea. So the first word that came up from that was scheitbrock, which is like shit stream. This literally means shit stream. Then we'll fast forward real quick into the word cunt that literally etymologically or etymologically i said that wrong but it literally meant the word vagina it had nothing to do with a person or anything degrading it was literally the professional term for vagina so that's just a short article explaining the history of some of our words. And there's many, many more out there. Just make sure that if you want to read up on it and you really want to get into the history of it, that you are also researching the people writing the article. I use these three because there's a ton of articles out there that you can't really tell who the authors are, where they're getting their information. And if you read it, some of it's a little bit iffy or questionable. There's not a whole lot of content to what they're saying. So just be very careful when you are researching online. And if you can get a hard copy of a book in a library somewhere, do that too. And so where does that leave us? Where does that leave us as a society? And it's kind of hard to, to put a challenge in this one because, you know, I'm not going to sit there and challenge you to go out cussing at people or using cuss words and, and trying to educate them on what profanity is. Because socially, these certain words have been used as profanity. And so it's very hard to get 
other people on board with believing differently. So this goes back to a few of the other episodes that I referenced when I said you're fighting a belief. Profanity, especially with these specific words, it's kind of turned into a belief. And so now we're going to have to unravel this belief that those words are degrading or derogatory. And, and here's the thing, guys. You can use your intent can be degrading. I can say, you know, you're a freaking pineapple and my intent behind it and my tone of voice can be degrading, not the word. And so we really just need to be real about the verbiage that we're using and the fact that it's not heinous, it's not profane, it's a little vulgar, yeah. Is it rough? Sure. Like, it's not a cotton candy word. You're not going to feel all warm inside when you feel it, but it's not profane and it's not there i guess to shame people or hurt people if a kid hears this word it's not gonna you know ruin them as a person um it has nothing to do with individuals it's just a word and then this goes back to my uh, most recent episode on discrimination if somebody's using these words against you if their intent is to bring you down or to hurt you or to degrade you then obviously it's not going to be something that you would want. You know, it's, it's not a feeling that anybody enjoys to be degraded or to be doc- talked down to. But that's where you have to build that resiliency and basically just not care what they're saying so that you can be the best you that you're going to be. It's also funny to me because I look back, uh, 2011, you know, I came to my faith and what I believe. And I didn't cuss. I didn't say a cuss word for a good three or four years, if I remember correctly. Um, I really, you know, just stayed away from that. And I remember, and my poor mom, I love her to death, but she made me so mad one day. My mom and I have had many falling outs and many coming togethers, and we're we're great. We're so close. Um, she really, you know, as my mom and my father, I've had a lot to do with who I am today and and my mindset and the way I think. They're very open-minded people and I'm so grateful for that. But I remember she made me so upset. And the first word that I said in my entire three or four years was bitch. And I remember it so clearly because my ex at the time was so appalled with me. Um, He was also very, very deep in the church and, you know, with his religious family. And long story short, I remember it so clearly because I remember feeling like dirty and horrible for saying the word. But at the same time, I felt so much better because it released so much energy that, you know, an emotion that I had been holding on to in that fight that we were having. Um, And don't get me wrong, guys, I have never cussed at my parents. That was one of those you go in your room, slam the door or, you know, cover your face with a pillow and you're screaming cuss words. So... But here's the thing, at the end of the day, a word is a word, and if you're going to let a word, or if you're going to be offended by a word, we do have profane words that shouldn't be spoken and shouldn't be used. But even if you go into that, if you let a word affect you, or somebody's intent affect you, then you need to look at yourself and what you can do to be resilient and to overcome that. And I'm only saying that, again, not because I don't care, I'm saying that because if, if you let somebody's words or intent or what they're saying to you or how they view you, you know, based on anything that is a part of you, your color of your skin, your ethnic background, your religious beliefs, anything. If you let somebody's belief or somebody's words or somebody's intent ruin your day or bring you down, and I'm guilty of this too, guys. I've, I've you know, been called things and I've gone through situations and it'll just wreck my day or my week. But I really had to learn that when that happens, it's not affecting them, it's affecting me and it's affecting my ability to respond to them in a professional or, you know, humane way, really. So I really just wanted to bring that to light. It was, it was never anything that I've been talked about before. It was just kind of, oh, we don't say these words. I, I never even said a cuss word in front of my parents until I was off on my own in the military serving and living my own life as an adult when I first have ever said a cuss word in front of my parents and I laugh now because I look at it and I'm like well why like it's really not a big deal like these words don't matter 
especially I think I was telling a story. That's what really was happening. I was telling a story and, you know, it's just <laughs> words just came out. It was part of the story. So that's all I have for you guys today. Again, I'm going to reference uh, this video and all the links that I have in the description on YouTube on this video. And I really encourage you guys to look into it because especially those out there that have kids or, you know, that are kind of confused. I have a daughter. She's nine months old. And sometimes I'm very confused. I'm like, should she be exposed to this? Should she not? Should I watch what I say more? You know, and so I really started kind of digging into, well... I want to teach her the truth. I want her to know that she doesn't have to feel ashamed for hearing or saying certain words because I want to teach her the intent that she should have towards people and not that a word, you know, don't be bound by words. Don't be bound by letters and words in a sentence or even somebody's intent. Um, you know, look beyond that and, and really dig into what the history is here. And then I think if you look at the history, it becomes even more funny because when somebody says like, screw you or, you know, go to hell, you can look at what that actually meant back then and where it came from. And the fact that we don't even know how to use it properly. We're not even using these words properly. And that's, that's the funniest thing about it. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for visiting us for episode four. Again, this one was on profanity. And we're going to send out the next episode on Friday. So keep a lookout for next Friday. You're going to hear that one there. Feel free to share this. Uh, subscribe to us, you know, for the updates if you want to. I'm not getting any revenue through YouTube. That's not my, my goal with this at all. Um, I'm actually going to switch over to iTunes soon. This is just so we can build that content platform so I can release uh, some content to you guys and get this this ball rolling because we're growing pretty fast and... I'm excited about it. I'm so excited about it and I'm grateful that you guys are a part of this and that you're willing to hear me out and also talk with me about it. This isn't just a podcast for me to talk. I'm actually in the works of emailing some individuals so we can get um, some interviews on here because I want you guys to hear more of what you know everybody's thinking and not just me. That's why when I do these podcasts, these self uh, shortcasts where it's just me speaking, I like to use a lot of references so that it's not just my background and just my opinion. I want to give you guys a well-rounded, full picture of what I'm trying to say here. So thanks again, guys, and join us for next week's podcast. This is Ashley Rodriguez. I'm your host of Taboo Talks, and we will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.